So all of a sudden, it's after February 20th. You spent some time on Valentine's Day, maybe you touched on Chinese New Year. Next thing you know, you've got about a week left and you still haven't talked about Black History Month. Hey, what's up? My name is Ryan and this is Musically Speaking. Black History Month is upon us, and just like our Chinese New Year lesson, many of us can feel intimidated by trying to teach something that we are not experts in. So again, the best advice I have is don't try to be one. Share with your students that you are learning along with them. While you are trying to share some information, you are learning as well. Mistakes can be made, but when we take risks, and even make mistakes, we grow. Leave a comment below with a risk you've taken in your teaching and how it made you feel. So today I want to talk a little bit about work songs. If you do any work songs in your program, we'd love to hear about them in the comment section below. African American work songs originally developed in an era of slavery, between the 17th and 19th centuries. Because they were part of an almost entirely oral culture, they had no fixed form and only began to be recorded as the era of slavery came to an end after 1865. Many songs sung by the enslaved have their origins in African song traditions and may have been sung to remind African Americans of where they came from, while others were instituted by the captors to raise morale and keep Africans working in rhythm. They've also been seen as a means of withstanding hardship and expressing anger and frustration through creativity or covert verbal opposition. Similarly, work songs have been used as a form of rebellion and resistance. A common feature of African American songs was the call and response format, where a leader would sing a verse or verses and the others would respond with a chorus. This came from African traditions of agricultural work songs, which is where we're heading today. Leave a comment below with what you've been doing for Black History Month, or maybe you haven't started yet, which is why we're here. Deo, also known as the Banana Boat Song, most likely originated around the turn of the 20th century, when banana trade in Jamaica increased. It was sung by workers who loaded shipping vessels with bananas down at the docks. The dock workers typically worked at night to avoid the harsh heat of the day. When daylight arrived, they knew the boss would come to tally up the loads so that they could go home. The tune had a response chorus, meaning the workers were supposed to chime in with a response to the singer's statements. Like most work songs, the lyrics of the Banana Boat song often changed or were altered to fit the situation. Well-known children's artist Raffi has a very popular and catchy version of the song that is easy for kids to follow and sing along to. I'll leave a link to it down in the description, along with a version that is more true to its origins. Now the music lesson comes in a couple of forms. There is a Boomwhacker YouTube video put out by Musication. I'll leave a link up in the top right here to check it out. My students love this song, and during a pandemic, I don't know if there's a better instrument than boomwhackers. They are light, portable, and because they are plastic, they are really easy to clean. For this lesson, I like slowing the video down at the beginning to about half speed, uh, or 0.5, so that students can grasp the repetitive nature of the song. Okay, just as an aside, I am still amazed at how many educators don't know how to slow down or speed up a video on YouTube. This is a fantastic little teaching tool that makes for fun variations in songs and videos on YouTube. Imagine finding a great video resource through YouTube, but there are some fast, tricky parts to that song that your students either just can't play or sing. Now you go in, slow it down to three quarters speed or 0.75, and it's instantly more manageable. Or, your class picked up on a lesson really quickly and you've got five minutes left in your class. So change the speed to 1.25 speed and challenge them to do it a little faster. Okay, when you start the song, it seems awfully slow, but as the song progresses, musication slowly adds more notes and complicates the rhythm. So I would recommend starting at half speed. If it seems like your class will find it too easy at 0.5, start at 0.75. In my class, once we achieved half speed, we would then aim for 0.75. When we got really good at 0.75, then we would aim for 1.0 speed, full speed. Now, as I said, boomwhackers are a great uh, resource and a great instrument, especially right now. But another amazing option are these boomwhacker glockenspiels from Sonar. Students can go from playing one or two notes on the boomwhackers to being able to play the whole song on these glockenspiels. They follow the same color scheme as the boomwhackers, which I found extremely helpful. When I introduce a new instrument, 
I love the idea of having your students experience success pretty quickly, which is why I think Musication has really got something special here. Musication also did not sponsor this video. These activities almost play out like a video game. The class follows the visuals and the class gets to experience an accomplished and relatively synchronized melody relatively quickly and easily. Also, if you're allowed to, I love recording a quick video of my class at the very beginning of this group of lessons and then going back and showing them what we sounded like in a then versus now comparison. They'll find the then video pretty funny to watch and be shocked at what they sounded like. As for expectations, so many possibilities. We're exploring melody. You could do this as a performance, even if it's just for their classroom teacher or even your administration or your principal. There's rhythm within that song that you could break down using actual notation. The possibilities are endless, as I say. Now, this is a general idea for a lesson, but leave a comment below if you'd like to see specifically how I introduce my xylophone unit and what tips and tricks I've got for getting the class's attention quickly after playing. Okay. If you've made it to the end, I just want to say a huge thank you. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing. We are posting at least one video a week to help you to infuse some new life and energy into your music program. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.